Hey guys, DMS3TV here. Today I have the AKG K7XX from Mastrop. Now, there's a lot of interesting things to say about these, and I've had a lot of people ask me if these are similar to other AKG headsets in certain respects, and we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to all that. But first off, I wanna talk about manufacturing. Now, it seems to be relatively common knowledge that AKG's best headphones are made in Austria. A lot of people have asked me if these are similar to those. And what makes them different? And it's this sticker right here. You probably can't see that on camera, but it says made in China. Now it's not always a bad thing. There's plenty of good hi-fi that comes out of China. There's the VE Monks, there's the NFB 11, but there's not the K7XX. Yes, it does come from China, but I'm not impressed with it. Now, in what respect? The build is not particularly bad. Um, when I first got these sent in, I didn't know what they cost. I didn't know what they were worth. I have no, I, I had none, none of that in, in respect. It was just putting them on, listening to them, feeling the build, feeling everything about them, and just kind of getting an understanding of what these headphones are. And when I did that, after about a week of using them, I determined, okay, these are probably in the $150 or less range. I expected they'd be like 150 brand new, um, but maybe closer to $100 in value. I went on Mastrop and found out that these are $199 at the lowest price, and Mastrop says they MSRP for over $600. The build quality in these is honestly about the same as it is on the SHP 9500s. Maybe slightly better in some respects. Obviously, there's you know more complex mechanisms in the works here. Um, there's a better connector. There's obviously this kind of headband is different from the SHP 9500s, but this is what it feels like. It feels cheap. It feels very cheap. I mean, these don't feel like Austrian made AKGs. So getting a little bit farther into that, the pads aren't bad. They are very stiff. They don't bother me too much, except for the fact that they are just shallow enough that my ears touch the inside right here where the driver is. And that wouldn't normally be too much of a problem, but you can feel hard plastic right there that rubs up against your ears. Now underneath here, there is a piece of foam and these just twist lock on and off, these pads do, which is a nice feature, I will say. But that foam is not very thick, and there, of course, is a large hole in the center of it. Depending on how big your ears are, that could be a problem, because you're gonna end up feeling driver. And not only that, I don't have a problem too much with this kind of headband that just has these elastic pieces on it, but this one in particular is made out of a somewhat rigid material that is starting to decay a little bit, it looks like. In the extent that it's getting really stiff and a little bit, it looks like it's starting to kind of maintain this one specific shape and it puts pressure in an uncomfortable spot on my head. And not only that, but you can tell the elastic on the side is starting to wear down just a little bit. Uh, I don't know how old these are. These were sent to me by a viewer of the channel. So I don't know how long they've been around, this particular pair. Uh, and they're in great shape. You can just tell that they have aged a little bit. So, with that being said, Build is, it's a China headphone, and not necessarily a good China headphone as far as Build is, is concerned. It's one of the more poor builds that I've seen. Uh, but, you know, that could be redeemed if sound is not bad. Uh, before I want to get into that, I do want to make a note on this cable. It is nice that it's removable. A lot of cables don't, or a lot of headphones don't have removable cables, and it just kills me if I see a high-end headphone that doesn't have a removable cable. For example, the Fostex T uh, THX00 and the Purple Hearts and stuff like that don't have removable cables, which I think is ridiculous for their price. This does have a removable cable. It is very, very, very long and terminates to three and a half mil with a screw on quarter inch. I mean, this is a long, 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 long cable. And it just clicks right in. <sighs> then there's the sound. So these are not bad sounding. Um, and I don't want to say that a headphone is specifically good or bad sounding. I mean, I guess I did to an extent with the uh, SH P9500s and the Fidelio X2s. I didn't like either of those that much, but of course that was due to just specific things in my preference. I wasn't a fan of the grain. I wasn't a fan of the spikes or the distortion in the uh, Fidelio X2s. But overall, I would take the Fidelio X2s over these. Now, why is that? It is because of something I did. I will admit I overlooked in the X2 review, and that is that while the X2s do distort, and while they do have a really, really weird frequency response, they are fun in some cases. These are not. These do have a bit of grain, not like Philips grain. It's not as intense as that. Um, 
The sound stage is okay. Treble is definitely there. Mids are definitely there. Everything's there. Um, they don't have a lot of extension, so you you do have bass, but not much sub bass. Uh, but it, it is relatively punchy. There is some impact. It's not bad, but it is very boring. And there are analytical headphones that are great, that have, you know, come just very, very neutral response that are not super fun, but are still great. These aren't fun and they're not particularly great. There's, and the issue isn't that they're bad in a specific category, it's that there's nowhere specifically where these stand out. There's nothing particularly about these that they do better than anything else. There's nothing special about them, that's the problem. Usually there's something that a headphone has that makes it stand out. Like HT650 is extremely relaxed. Uh, HD 600 is extremely neutral. Argon has that ridiculous bass extension. And these have what? Because I can't find anything. I hate to be nitpicky, and I hate to leave a negative review on something, but I feel like I have to be honest. And I know that there's gonna be people that really like these headphones. And if you do, and you have a pair and you enjoy them, that's what matters. What matters is that you have something that you can enjoy, where you can listen to music the way you want to. Because when it really comes down to it, a lot of what I do, a lot of reviewing, is personally trying a product and looking at its strengths and weaknesses and also basing part of that off of preference and explaining my preferences. Um, and my preferences aside, I still don't see anything that I really particularly like about these, but someone might. Someone might enjoy these a lot and someone might, you know, listen to music on these and it might move them in a way that other headphones can't. I don't know. That's up to you, really, and, you know, what you like. Um, but me personally, I just, I can't go into detail on the sound because I just, there's nothing, nothing particularly interesting there to talk about. Anyway, guys, I know this is kind of a short one. I really appreciate you sticking around, though. Um, the next one is the Fostex THX00 Purple Hearts from Mass Drop. I know I've done a lot of Mass Drop stuff lately. No, I'm not actually <coughs> in cahoots with Mass Drop or anything like that. Um, so, but someone has just sent in a lot of mass drop stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and then after that, I've got the big IEM roundup and I'm doing a review of a DAP. So make sure you stick around for those. And until next time, guys, peace.